Just like the splash screen says, insanely reliable, but with a design flaw that's really crazy. Let's take a look at this GX470. This customer scheduled this in not too long ago, all the way from Missouri, and brought us their 2007 Lexus GX470. It's here for a timing belt and a water pump, which is a standard service. It roughly has 166,000 miles on it, and it's either time to do it or the second time. I'm not sure if it's been done yet, and we'll find out once we dive in and get it apart. But the third thing that the customer wants is to go ahead and replace the starter. I don't know if they have any issues with the starter. They just said, just do it, go ahead and replace it. And that's where the design flaw in this is, it's really crazy. But before we get to that, we'll take a look around this thing and see what it looks like. If you're out there looking for an Equinox or an Acadia, don't buy one of these. Even with this little design flaw that I'm gonna show you here in a little bit, don't waste your time on those cars. So here's the front end of a GX470. This one's in fairly good shape. I believe it's a daily driver for the customer. They're fancy, they're not fancy like a Range Rover or something, but where they don't shine in styling, they shine in reliability. We look down the side here, it's not dented or beat up. It's got nice Michelin tires. When I see Michelin tires on a vehicle, I know the customer's not interested in price shopping and worrying about three cents more expensive at this place. They want it done right, and they want it done once and for all. This one has a Nash Fab Company ladder on it. I guess you could get up and store things up on top if you wanted to get up there a little easier. These are kind of a tall vehicle. But again, no damage back here. Everything looks good. And very likely the same story on this side. You can tell it's been well taken care of, 166,000 miles, and it looks like it has 30 or 40,000 miles. It's very nice. Let's go ahead and open the hood. So here we have the Vernable 4.7 Toyota V8. It's not the most powerful V8 they have, but it is a very reliable, very good engine. The thing that I really want to show you that's kind of a design flaw is most vehicles for two, three, four hundred dollars, you can get a new starter put on. That is not the case on one of these. This big plastic intake right here has to come off to get to the starter. Just like a Cadillac North Star where the intake comes off to get down to the starter, and we all think that's pretty stupid. It's the same story here. It pays four hours to do the starter on this, and we charge 120 an hour for that, so you do the math and you're already pretty high and you haven't even paid for the starter itself yet. You also need to think intake gaskets will be included in this job. So we're getting six, seven, eight hundred dollar range and we haven't even done the timing belt or water pump yet. So it added up real fast in a hurry. Why they need to put the starter under the intake, I don't know. Maybe because it keeps it quiet or out of the road salts or dirt. I don't know the design idea behind it, but it is what it is, and it has to come off to get to the starter. Luckily, this is an old enough vehicle. It does not have the stop-start feature. When you come to a red light, it just shuts off, like a lot of the newer vehicles do today. That's actually very hard on the starter. Mrs. Wizard's Maserati also does that, and every time we get into the car, we immediately turn that feature off. Because if a starter has, let's say, 10,000 cycles, you just triple the amount of cycles because you're stop, start, stop, start. So the lifespan of that starter just got really short. We don't like to use that. For the amount of money you're saving on fuel, which probably is negligible at best, you're going to have to replace starters faster. I don't agree with the start, stop thing. So luckily, that is not an issue on these vehicles. One thing that tells me this is a daily driver is that it has road salt from the winter weather here all inside. That's what it's for, for daily driving, so it's to be expected. But the timing belt water pump job that we're also going to do on this, as you can see, it's right here in front of the engine. Here's the little plastic covers. The accessories, some of them have to come off. The belt has to come off. It's not that bad of a job on these. It's actually not bad at all. You don't have to take loose motor mounts or do anything crazy. It's right there, easy to get to. 
We'll do those things and do the starter for the customer and have him back on the road. Let's go check out the interior on this thing. Okay, ladies and gents, just like the wizard said, it does have 166,000 miles on it. Which, being that this is a Toyota product, that's doing really good. It's got a whole lot of life left to it. Of course, it's shining like a Christmas tree in there because we just have this in accessory mode. But hey, the lights work, but they're not actually notifying us of any problems. If we look up there, we do have a dash mat. They have kind of added a theme to their car. They have a gray dash mat. You can see on the door card there that there is gray with a beige kind of accents on it. As we move in, we can see that they have added a heck of an Alpine, you know, big, huge touch screen as big as an iPad system in here. So that, that will kind of jazz it up a little bit more as long as you're not too distracted, you know, Looking at the road, looking at the radio, looking at the road, looking at the radio. We want to make sure the driver is safe. As we do move down, you know, I've got some lovely wood accents in here. And the one fun thing in here is they have some lovely gray sheepskin in here. And it feels like you are being hugged by a very big teddy bear. So that's kind of interesting. I haven't seen sheepskin in a car since my grandpa had it in the 1980s. So it's nice to see that somebody is still appreciating the fine fuzzy parts of seating. As we go to the back seat, you can see we've got some lovely kind of a beige leather going on back there. Looks like it's got a 40-60 split as well. And it's looking really, really good. So being a daily driver, the leather's in good shape, at least the parts that we see. We can see on the headliner, it's also looking great up there as well. No marks, no smudges. Nobody was eating candy bars before this one. No chocolate fingers on this one. As we end up here at the steering wheel, as always, you'll see it does have a few wear spots on it. And it's just part of the material that has come off. It is not grime. It is not anything other than that. It's just where it's actually just come off. And so if they were to simply put a cover over it, they could. But again, the parts you're holding up here feel really nice. The wood grain does look really good still on the steering wheel. I'm curious what this looks like underneath. Let's get this up in the air. So we'll start up here, the condenser and the radiator. You see a little clip or something's missing there. We'll take care of that, but nothing leaking there. Everything looks pretty easy to get to. You had to work on that. It looks very simple. Take a look at these wheels up here. The pads are about half gone, but they're still good. Nothing loose. Nice dry strut there. Sway bar link is good. CV boots are good. Move to this side. CV boots are good again. Sway bar link is good. Strut is dry. We peek up through the little hole here. We can see our front differential and our engine oil pan are nice and dry. We go back here to the transmission. It is also nice and dry. This is really a hallmark of Toyota, guys. 166,000 miles, even the bolts are still shiny. And as you've seen, this has been a daily driver, going through the slush and the mud and everything else. There's many American cars with this many miles that are not this clean and dry on the underneath. Check our little drive shaft here. Nothing loose. Here's our transfer case, also nice and dry. Your joints are good. Here's our fuel tank. Here we're at the rear differential. Nothing loose there. And look where Toyota or Lexus put the charcoal canister. Up above the spare tire, safe and out of the way. And you guys have seen many videos that I've done where they're, we're looking at a Jeep or a Buick or whatever. And they'll have the canister hanging like right here out in the open, ready to be cracked open. But at least they engineered it well that it's up out of the way, so it's nice and safe. Here we do see the rear only has air suspension on these vehicles. I did not have to put it in some special mode to lift it. 
So it just goes up there. Here's our ride height sensor. Everything's intact there. Our shock is nice and dry. Sway bar link is good. Brakes are about halfway, which is fine. No leaks on our differential. Brakes are good. Sway bar link is good. The shock is dry. Everything looks good under here. Spare tires nice and full of air. I'm going to show you as I put this thing down, halfway down I'll show you some things in the wheel well, but as I put the weight of the vehicle I heard a small air leak. I noticed that the suspension was a little low on this before we moved it. I think he may have an airbag that's leaking. So let's get it halfway down and then we'll put it all the way down. So any of you that have a Jeep Commander with a Hemi in it know that you cannot get to anything, the exhaust manifolds, everything's so hard to get to, and that's really the story of a lot of American cars. But look at this Lexus Toyota. Look at our exhaust manifold. I can take the wheel off and get to everything without cursing, without getting mad, no throwing wrenches across the shop. There's the AC compressor. I can unbolt it, take the belt off, evacuate the refrigerant and just pull it right off right there there's our steering shaft if there's any issues there it's right there ready to be worked on this is why you buy a Toyota guys it's cheaper to fix because the mechanic doesn't get pissed off when he works on your car let's go look at the other side there's our alternator Take the belt off, unhook the connections. Boom, there it is. There's our power steering pump. There's a block drain right there, easy to get to. Again, our exhaust manifold, which rarely leak on these, but if it did, there it is, e out in the open, easy to get to. This is why mechanics like Toyotas. Not only because they last a long time and they give a lot less grief to their customers, but because when it is time to fix something, I'm not going to go over there and hit the M3 with a hammer again. It's really not that bad. So let's lower it down and see if we can hear the air leak that I thought I heard. Right now I actually don't hear it, but when we first drove over here on the passenger rear I heard a hissing noise. No, it's not a snake. This airbag, which is typical on airbag suspension, at different points where the, the rubber folds, there could be a pinhole that seals itself up sometimes. And other times when you extend the airbag, it starts leaking. So we're definitely going to get either Magic Mike or Danielson on this with soapy water. And we'll spray the airbag and look for bubbles coming out. So I know there's a leak. I heard it. It's not doing it right now. But we're definitely going to check into that. So you guys probably noticed... Before we put this on the lift, it was sagging at the rear left. And once I started the engine, it went back up again. And now it's sitting level. So I definitely know between the hissing noise that I heard and it was sagging, there's definitely an air leak on this. And we'll get to the bottom of it. And we'll get a price to the customer. And thinking about prices, the starter on this obviously is not going to be cheap. The customer was fully aware of the situation. I have no issues with this customer. He said, whatever it costs, let's just get it done. But these particular engines, I've actually had arguments on the phone. It shouldn't take no $800 to do a starter. My grandpa could do it in 30 minutes on a Chevy truck. or Just like I just mentioned, and just like in this picture, the intake has to come off to get to the starter. I've actually lost a few jobs where people call and said, I'm, I'm just not going to pay $750 for a starter. I'm just not doing that. Okay. Don't. Which brings to mind, I would like to do a public service announcement, pretty much for all mechanics. I get a lot of times questions asked, how much is it going to cost? I want to estimate before I come in. And some shops may do estimates, but we don't hear. Our priority is quality, honesty, and to make sure we do it right the first time so that you don't get hassled and have to keep bringing your car back. Our, our mantra here is not the cheapest price. We don't do sight unseen estimates over the phone. Another reason why is because uh, you say, I need an estimate on a water pump. So we actually spend a half an hour, look up the prices, get everything together, give you a call back, give you an estimate, 
And then we get your vehicle in and find out it wasn't even the water pump to begin with. Your radiator's leaking. So now we just wasted our time for an estimate. We wasted your time. It's not worth it to do over the phone estimates. We need to get your car in the shop. We will see what's wrong with the car. Then we will call you. That's the way it works in this shop. And most shops really, that's the way they do it anymore. This customer didn't mention anything about his suspension, but we sure did find it today, didn't we? That wasn't on the estimate. Now I know I won't have any issues with this customer, but I have had some with other customers. You didn't quote me on that. Well, no, because you never mentioned it, and it wasn't even known until the vehicle showed up to the shop. I know of some shops that if you bring your car to their shop, in a few days you'll get a phone call. It's done, it's ready to go, the bill is six grand. They didn't even ask you, they didn't even talk to you. That's not what we do here. We will look your car over, then we'll get a price together. If you're not happy with the price and you think it's too high, we will park it out front and you can go try a different shop. But we're not going to stick you with a bill without asking you first. So you don't have to worry about that here at Omega Auto Clinic. So now my little rant is over. Just information for you guys. It actually can save you some time. Just let us look at your vehicle. We can get you an accurate estimate of exactly what's wrong with your car, not guessing what we think is wrong with your car. So if you're curious what kind of tools we're going to use on this timing belt, water pump, starter, and possibly an air leak situation, check my Amazon affiliates link in the description below. We get a small cut and we really appreciate it. And make sure to hit the subscribe button because we're booked all the way to April right now. Lots of cars coming into the shop. Thanks for watching.